Hello everybody, my name is Zodis and welcome to Zodis Gaming. In this video, I'm going to tell you guys how to play your Frost Death Knight in patch 6.0.3, Warlords of Draenor. So, what we're going to cover in this video is first off rotation, then burst, then talents, then glyphs, then main stats, then survivability, and overall playstyle. A lot has changed, and you guys need to, need to uh, figure, you know, you guys need to know it. A lot has changed as to how Frost Death Knights play. Uh, the overall play style is very, very different. Uh, a lot has changed. So, let's get started. For your rotation, not much has changed except for the removal of Necrotic Strike. Now, the removal of Necrotic Strike did not really hinder us. It actually, I, in my opinion, made us better. Uh, the reason being is that we can focus less on that trying to absorb healing and focus more on damage. Now, for some of you, you're probably thinking that sounds counterproductive, but we can put more of our runes, those death, those death runes, into Obliterate, so we get more damage, and as long as you stay on your Dispels, you can still very much nullify the amount of healing that an enemy can put out. So, the rotation, for those of you who need a little brush up on what it is, is right now, what I'm doing is I'm opening up with three Obliterates, I get out all my runes. And then I stuff all of my frost strikes. I usually you should have close to full runic power. You just shove all those runes, all those frost strikes into your enemy, get rid of all of it, and then by then you should have a howling blast proc. Proc. If you're battling a DPS that cannot heal, or then use the howling blast. If you're battling a DPS or healer that has hots or shields of some kind, then um, then at your at your uh, discretion use Icy Touch to dispel. This is especially good against priests and druids because they focus so much on those hots and those shields. Now then, other than that, it's making sure you use that Howling Blast on proc. Um, we'll cover the rest of your rotation, like your survivability rotation, the survivability part of the video. Um, other than that, the rest of your abilities are used at your own discretion. Chains of Ice to get, you know, that get to get that slow or to get the dots on rogues. Uh, burst at your discretion, uh, Soul Reaper whenever they get down low enough to use it on them effectively, Dark Simulacrum on, heal on mages, we know they're about to blink, or on um, healers whenever you need to get an extra heal, or on Brett Paladins when you know they're about to bubble, <laughs> that's really fun, um, your stun at your, yeah, at your own discretion. AMS at your own discre at your own discretion. The only time that a mage is about to burst, especially, and on rogues when they open up on you. Uh, keep, uh, yeah, keep conversion up all the time. I'm gonna go over a little bit more of that in survivability, but keep it up all the time as as someone's attacking you. That is, um, always stay in blood or frost presence as always. And icebound fortitude. You can use it whenever you're taking a lot of damage, or use it whenever you need a escape from like a stun or something. All right, so next is Burst. Burst is different because as I'm going to cover in talents, we're not going to be using Unholy Blight like we have in the past. We're gonna use Plague Bear. So for your Burst, it's not gonna be like it was last expansion where you find a single target, you Gorfiend's Grass, you uh, pop your damage buffs, and then you Unholy Blight and you get a lot of dot damage. Instead, you're typically not gonna run Gorfiend's Grass. It's still useful for some things, but it's not the uh, main way you wanna run. So, for the burst, it's literally quite simple. You just have your macro with Pillar of Frost and all that. Pillar of Frost, your potions. In fact, here's a little snippet of my macro for my one-shot macro. Here it is. Um, use that macro and then just pump, you know, just work your regular rotation and just go ham. You try to be in Frost Presence when you burst. If you can't, then it's not going to be that big of a deal, but as always, Frost Presence is going to get you more damage. So, on to talents. For your first tier, you're gonna want Plague Bear. Uh, Plague Bear, Death Coil and Frost Strike also inflict your target, adding four seconds to the overall duration of Frost Fever and Blood Plague, and adding an additional stack to Necrotic Plague. That's really good. Um, it's, it's only run this if you're running Necrotic Plague, which I definitely suggest running Necrotic Plague. Uh, that just makes sure you always have dots up, and Necrotic Plague, we'll get there in a moment, but it's extremely useful to have it up on as many targets as possible. For your second tier, Lichborn, this is the only choice. Anti-magic zone for PvP does not work because you're not chances are you're not going to stay in that AM uh, anti-magic zone for very long, and Purgatory is kind of useless. So Lichborn is different now. Whenever you Lichborn, you don't use those death coils on yourself to heal yourself up. Instead, 
it gives you a 10% leech, which means that you, for 10 seconds, you get a, uh, you get 10% of the damage you put out as healing. So that's definitely very, very useful. Make sure you use that. It still removes charm, fear, and sleeps, so, and makes you immune, so that hasn't changed. For tier 3, you want Asphyxiate or Chillblains. I personally recommend Asphyxiate, just because right now Chillblains isn't near as useful. Um, Asphyxiate, it's just a, it's just a game changer against healers, um, and DPS it can off heal, especially those Rhett Paladins. Chillblains, it's not as necessary, um, unless you're going up against a healer comp that, you know, you need a root for. So, next up, your fourth tier, you want Runic Empowerment, uh, Blood tap is stupid for any DK now because the removal of necrotic pl uh, necrotic strike. Without necrotic strike, there's no use in having all those extra death runes. Obliterate can use all of the death uh, all runes, so it doesn't really matter. Runic corruption, it actually, if you think about it, is better than runic empowerment. But runic corruption has been bugged for the le since Miss Pandaria released. It doesn't work like it should. I don't know why they never fixed it. Maybe it does work like it should, but the tooltip is wrong for whatever reason. It is horrible. Don't run with it. Um, if you don't believe me, give it a try, and I tr and trust me, you will notice a difference between Runic Empowerment and Runic Corruption. So definitely run Runic Empowerment. For Tier 5, you want to run Conversion or Death Pack. I personally prefer Conversion because it gives you a more consistent healing. It's not as much as Death Pack, but you got to think Death Pack is on a two-minute cooldown. So as long as you're playing your, as long as you're using your death strikes and you're playing smart, then conversion is going to help you better in the long run, not just once but all the time. And a little touch on why that's gotten better to use with later on when we get necrotic plague. For the sixth tier, you want to run either desecrated ground or Gorfiend's grasp. I prefer desecrated ground because that is effectively another PVP trinket. Gorfiend's grasp is still useful. But it's not near as useful unless you're running Unholy Blight, because as we're about to, again, go to, Necrotic Plague changes that. And you'll kind of understand where I'm getting at when I read it. For the last tier, level 100 talents, you have to go Necrotic Plague. Um, I'm not even going to give you an option, trust me so much, I promise you this is the best ability in the game for Death Knights right now. I'm going to read it to you. It's a passive ability. A powerful disease that deals 157 Shadow Frost damage per stack every 2 seconds for 30 seconds. Each time it deals damage, it gains 1 stack and infects another nearby enemy with, within 8 yards if possible. You gain 2 Runic Power whenever a target in infected with Necrotic Plague attempts to attack you. Replaces Blood Plague and Frost Fever and is applied by any ability which applied either. This effect cannot be, ref cannot be refreshed, it gains 1 stack instead. Now, Necrotic Plague is extremely useful, especially when you team up Play Bear. A, this is a more damaging ability. You gotta think, the longer the battle goes, the more dot damage you put out, because the higher it stacks. It has, as far as I can tell, it has no cap on how high it can stack. It can stack a thousand times if you get a if you hit if you stack it up. And that increases the damage so much. It does so much damage. The longer the battle goes, especially get good against healer, healer comps, the longer the battle goes, the more chance you're gonna win. So, that's extremely nice. Another thing is it automatically spreads itself. You don't have to worry about your dots being on another target. If they're within 8 yards, then they're automatically going to get those dots. That's amazing. The next thing is, it gives you runic power when you take damage. That is amazing, and that's why conversion is so good right now, because we have an abundance of runic power, and if you team it up with the glyph that I'm going- a new glyph I'm going to give you in the next section, then, dear god, you are a machine. You have so little empty zones in your rotation because you have so much runic power to pump into the conversion and into the frost strikes that you almost never have downtime unless you completely just jack up your rotation. There's nothing you can really do to screw it up. So that's really great. I, you have to run Plague Bear and Necrotic Plague. Um, you gotta run them both together. Don't run Unholy Blight and Necrotic Plague. You gotta run Necrotic Plague and Plague Bear. Just do it, trust me, it's so good. They stack so well together, um, and it's just a great team. So, finally, let's go to the Glyphs. Let me fix this. Alright, so, for your Glyphs, as usual, you wanna run Glyph of Icy Touch for your Dispel. This is useful against Priests, against Rep Paladins, against Mages, and against... Uh, Feral Druids, or any kind of Druid, really, because you're able to spell Hots, you're able to spell Buffs, you're able to spell anything. 
So, you've got to have Glyph of Icy Touch for PvP. Next up is Glyph of Anti-Magic Shell. It causes your Anti-Magic Shell to absorb all incoming magical damage up to the absorption limit. Now, some people go with the, um, with the Glyph of the Absorb Glyph, which makes you absorb an extra 100% magical damage. The thing is, in PvP, no one ever is going to reach the absorption limit, so Glyph of Anti-Magic Shell is actually the best way to go. This makes it basically an effective bubble whenever you're fighting a, any kind of spellcaster. It's, a, it's an effective bubble, and it's amazing. And the new addition, this is the one thing that's really changed, is Glyph of Runic Power. Whenever you're struck by a movement impairing effect, you will generate 3 Runic Power every 1 second for 5 seconds. Team this up with Necrotic Plague, and oh my god, you have so much runic power, I'm not even shit, like, I'm not joking, it is bullshit, it is broken, it is a lot of runic power. It is way more than you'll ever need. So, you could either run Glyph of Runic Power, or you could run with Empowerment. Empowerment makes it to where your Empower Rune Weapon also heals you for 30% of your maximum health. This is very good, that's an extra 30% heal. The thing is, is that, Glyph, is that uh, Empower Rune Weapon is on a 5 minute cooldown. cooldown. So for me, and I don't really want to think, oh man, I should save my Empower Rune Weapon as a heal. I would rather use it for my DPS. I don't want to use it defensively. So I think that um, I think that the Glyph of Empowerment actually kind of um, imp impairs you a little bit. It's up to you. Give it a try. If you want to get rid of Anti-Magic Shell for it, then you can, but I don't really recommend it. It's up to you on which one you like. For me, I'm definitely going to be running Glyph of Runic Power for the rest of the expansion. That's just amazing. So let's move on to the main stats. Some new stats have been added and some stats have been replaced. In the past it's always been haste and mastery were the best way to go. Haste, mastery, and crit really. Crit being the last of course. Crit's kind of useless because obliterate has a pretty high chance to crit naturally. So basically what you want to focus on, I've ran a couple of tests, is haste is great but you don't want to really focus it. As far as your enchants go and your gems go and all that you don't really want to focus haste. What you want to go for is versatility and mastery. Versatility coming before mastery, and here's the reason why. Versatility increases the amount of damage you do and reduces the amount, the amount of damage you take, and that is all the time, and that affects all of your abilities. So if you have, like I have, 5% versatility, all of your abilities do 5% extra damage, and you take 5% less damage. Mastery is it increases your frost damage so that means your howling blasts and your frost strikes this i'm making it be low versatility just because it doesn't affect everything it only affects two of your abilities really so mastery it, versatility is first mastery is second think of that and you'll be fine haste don't ever turn it down but if you had to take if you have to have a choice between haste and versatility or haste and mastery definitely choose the versatility or mastery over it Haste, uh, for those of you who don't know, makes it to where your runes come off cooldown slightly faster and increases your auto attack speed. So, uh, I tried stacking haste. It's not all that for DKs. Yes, it'll take a good half second to a second off of your runic cool your rune cooldown, but especially running uh, Plague Bear and Necrotic Plague, you get so much runic power anyways, and you, you can put out so many frost strikes that imp runic power that you can get those great uh, runes back very quickly. So, that's it for your main stats. Now let's go over survivability. Survivability is a very big one. Lots of people don't know how to survive. And I'll tell you this right now. Survivability for Death Knights is amazing right now because you can so easily use Death Strike all the time and you can have conversion up all the time. So basically, if you're below 50% HP, Death Strike. Death Strike, Death Strike, Death Strike, get up the full, it doesn't take much, and keep conversion up all the time. If you're getting attacked, stay in Blood Presence. If you're not getting attacked, stay in Frost Presence. That's simple. If you need to get the kill, don't worry if you're getting focused. If you need to get the kill, go ahead and go Frost Presence. As long as you're playing smart, you got your conversion up, and you're using your Death Strikes periodically, then nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna kill you for a while, and you're gonna be able to get that kill. Death Strike does a decent amount of damage, so you should be good. Uh, as other than using those death strikes, all the, you know, anytime you need them, anytime you're below 50% health or coming close to it, as long as you have your runic, your uh, your conversion up on all the time, all the time, no matter what, as long as you have those two things going for you, 
and you're effectively kiting whenever you need to, when as long as you're using Lichborn whenever you need it for a 10% uh, leech, then you are good. Use that AMS on cooldown if you have to, you're going up against casters, then either A, use it on cooldown, or time it perfectly, make sure you're catching them in their burst, make sure you're catching them when they need it, you know, they need to put some damage into you, when they blink, or not blink, whenever they do anything that you really need to stop. If you can do those things and use Icebound Fortitude as well, then you should be golden on survivability. Next up is the overall playstyle. The playstyle has changed so much, guys. It really has. Uh, in previous expansions, Frost Death Knights were always the kill target. We always, when you go into an arena, it was just understood that you are the kill target. You're going to die. You're just going to. Not anymore. With the added amount of survivability and the fact that Necrotic Plague does what it does, there is an extremely low chance that an enemy team is going to want to focus you because they're going to know they're just going to feed you Necrotic, you're just, they're just going to feed you Runic Power and you're going to put out a shit ton of damage and chances are they're not going to be able to do anything through it. So, I'm, rather than being so defensive, which don't get me wrong, we've still got to be defensive at times, but rather than being focused on this defensive aspect of the play style, we're going to be very, very, very aggressive. Um, it's going to be a very aggressive game style, play style. We're going to just be right in the action constantly. We're going to be doing all kinds of great stuff. Don't be worried about dying all the time. As long as you're using the, your survivability methods, you're kiting and all that, you're never really going to have to worry about dying in Arena unless your healer sucks or unless you're just not as good as the people you're going up against. You know, that's anybody, but it's pretty it's pretty strong. Just uh, do Arenas and kind of get the feel for it. Uh, try to be very, very aggressive and you'll get very far. The damage is still amazing. The damage is very high for Frost Death Knights and survivability is uh, just outstanding. It's perfect. I don't think that it's overpowered. I don't think it's underpowered. I still die, but I die very less frequently. And it takes a good player. It takes a player of at least my skill level or better to take me down. And I think that's how it should be. So I really don't think that survivability is, uh, is too overpowered. I think it's perfect. So that is how you play your Frost Death Knight, guys. And I hope that you learned a lot, and I hope that everything I said makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment uh, in the description, or leave a comment. I'll get back to you ASAP, and I'll tell you, you know, I'll explain to you anything you have questions about. Um, or you can inbox me if it's something that you don't quite want there in public, which I can understand why. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.